Hi everyone, it's Monday the 19th of July and it's 7.30 in the evening. And in this video I'm going to be showing you some more model railway stuff that I've uh, picked up recently. Uh, last Saturday I went to Alsham Car Boot and uh, there was an elderly gentleman there who was selling a lot of uh, model railway stuff. Box full of uh, locomotives and locomotive parts. Um, all non-runners, all in bits, all needed sorting. Um, what else did he have? He had a box with some rolling stock in, lots of various boxes of certain scenery items and other bits and bobs. Anyway, I did buy quite a bit from him. Um, in fact, I spent about 40 quid. <laughs> That's about it. The box full of, well, what I would call spares and repairs locomotive for the whole box was only £10. And that did have a load of other bits and bobs and spare bits as well as, um, I think I counted about 16 locomotives. I've got a good number of them working. There's a couple that I don't think I can get up and running and in working order again, unfortunately. but. There's a good chunk of them here. I'm actually waiting for a few parts, so I'll show you what I've got here on the desk right now, then I'll pause the video, clear this, and I'll go and get some other bits and bobs that I can arrange on here and show you that and so on, because I lack space at the minute. <laughs> so, what we've got at the moment. This is non-running on the count of we haven't got the motor I think it's the motor bogey that's missing yeah. This is a Lima Italy. That one's complete. And I was tempted to hit eBay at some point and see if I could find another one of these or I could just eBay that as spares or repairs because to be honest I'm not really keen on that so I'm guessing those wheels were used as pickups because they're metal ones. You know, don't I haven't seen anything in all the bits for this anyway, so I'm not sure what sort of locomotive it is. My stepdad called it a bullet train. No idea. So we got that one. That's currently a non-runner. In fact, there's one here that I bought on eBay. I'll get to that last. This one, which is another Princess Elizabeth, the same as the one I've got uh, in that, what do you might call it, the, um, the Triang train set I bought a couple of weeks ago. This one I don't think it's going to go again. All of this is broken, completely missing from this side. But the motor does run, so if anything, I've got a spare body and a spare motor and some wheels maybe and pickups. <clears throat> maybe if I could find the comrods and everything, I could rebuild it. But I've seen like loads of these on eBay and they're not that much to go and buy. So that might just be a spares, a donor loco. We've got another one here. And that's the body for it. And again, if it actually wasn't for this, I could have probably have found a motor to put in here. Actually, looking at that, I'm not so sure the motor would go on here. I think that's just a weighted body with a um, tender drive from the looks of it. Maybe this just had the pickups on it. Looking at the separated wheels, I'm probably not far off on that. But yeah, either way, the conrods are all broken this side. Got a bit missing and that bit has actually snapped off of it anyway. So at the moment, that is just another donor loco. Oh. Um, we've got a few 
chassis and motors along here. We'll just let that twat go past. <laughs> Actually, this is a motor that broke on me when I was trying to fix one of the locos. I'll get to that in a bit because it's over there. Um, but yeah, there's a spare Class 58 motor there. Um, I've also got the spare trailing bogey for it and a spare body shell. I just haven't got a chassis to make another one up. <laughs> got two here. And these two are actually running. I did get them to run fine. Um, not that I would actually need to build up another one, but if I could find the parts too cheap enough, I might. Uh, then we've got this one, which I can't quite... I think it's the Princess Louise from the looks of it. No tender. But it is a running loco. I can't remember if I've... No, I haven't put a screw back in it yet. So I better be careful with that one. But yeah, that one is a running one. Let's see if I can find the uh, tender for that. There's another little chassis with a motor still in it. Those motors are actually good. Problem with this one is... Is it that one? No, it's not this one. Oh, it's this one. No, it's not that one either. One of them, oh, it's on the um, track, I'm getting my um, chassis mixed up. One of them, I think the gear is stripped because I can move the wheels around freely with the motor on. And the motor gear's not even doing anything. So I've got a couple of chassis there, but I haven't got any bodies to put on them. I've got spare bodies over there, just off camera, but they don't fit. I've got a spare ring field motor for something. That's uh, actually looks like it's quite old. Doesn't look like it's from a a newer loco at least. A spare 040 chassis there, which is falling to bits. <laughs> yeah, that one's uh, quite uh, disintegrating. Disintegrating. Disintegrating quite badly. Disintegrating even. Right. Let me just pan you around that way a bit. So just parked up on the sidings here I've got th th uh, three 040s which are just rolling shells. Let's see there's no motor or anything in them. There's that one, that one, that one. And then we've got this one which I don't know if I can do anything with it. Let's see if I just hold it I can... And you can hear the gear wheel is just skimming the um, worm gear on the motor in there. Um, yeah, it does nothing. I've got no brushes in it at the minute, but it does work. If I put the brushes in, it does function. It just doesn't drive the wheels. I've got a freewheeling one here. Um, some of them I am actually going to leave as freewheelers like that. And I'm going to weather them up. Um... And have them parked on sidings like that and then I can use um, one of my shunters to shunt them around maybe. You know, I've seen videos of lots of preservation railways and a lot of them do seem to have like some old tatty knackered looking locomotives sitting on sidings. I don't know if they plan to ever restore them or if they're just there for parts or what but it seems like a lot of preservation railways do have them just sat on sidings like that so that's what i'm going to probably do with those four i've actually got five free wheeling um chassis at the moment but the fifth one is a jinty and i am planning to rebuild that one because it's a hornby jinty my other two are trying they won't run on this track not without making a lot of noise, so um, I do want to rebuild the horn, but it needs motor and pickups and whatnot installed on it. Basically, that's it. That's all it needs. Everything for the chassis is there. I've got to find the Conrod for it because I have taken one off. 
but other than that, yeah, it's over there, it's actually by the engine shed over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's actually behind this one if I move that. There it is. It's got the conrod on it this side, but not the other. Alright, so sticking to the the broken theme at the minute. I've got this American loco. Um, which does work. I've got it in bits at the minute. The motor does work. There seems to be a short somewhere, or either that or I'm just not doing something right. But it needs to drive bands. Or I need some sort of bands on here to drive it. That's it. As far as I can tell, that's all it needs, and then that will run. Um, I was linked to the American eBay that has the bands for one of these, but the shipping is like 16 quid. Like, ouch! For something so light and small, all that postage just to ship it, that's ridiculous. Um, but if I can't find anything over here, I probably will go for that, because I don't know how common these are over here. Um, then we've got this Prairie, I think it is. Um, motor's running fine. The issue is that when I stick a meter across these, it's a short. So when I stick it on the track, nothing happens. Um, if I actually use my other train controller, which has got the um, short circuit trip on it, it just trips the button. So one of the insulators on here are probably gone, probably on these ones. Um, it's a shame really because I could get that working. This is an old Triang. I would love to have put that with my uh, other Triang stuff. This one, that isn't actually the correct body for that chassis. Um, the correct body for that chassis is this one. The BR green one. Um, but the Pickup bogey on this one has been completely butchered. I've actually ordered another one from eBay. See, someone's put in this bourgeois there to act as a ground, but look at that. It's all melted and horrible, and these wheels don't roll very well, and I can't actually get anything to pick up with it now, so because I've got two of the BR Blue Class 33s, I thought, at least for the time being, I've just swapped the bodies because these are all leaders. All three are leaders. My other one is here. This one I actually like because this has got the um, front and rear lights, reversible lights on it as well. Yeah, that one. Yep, that's a lemur. All three are lemurs. In fact, I've got four. Because <coughs> I've got the Network Southeast one as well. Which is just sitting here with the uh, Network Southeast coaches on it. So I'm just waiting for that to arrive in the mat. That's it, the motor works fine. The motor is perfect. It's just this end that's being a pain in the bottom. And then I suppose I could eBay it or I actually quite like the 33s though, so I actually find it's a bit like die-cast cars. If I find that I really like a certain one, I find it hard to actually part with it. I mean, I probably would one day if someone I don't know if someone wanted to trade or whatever. So I'm going to put that back over there because it's in for repairs. Then we've got this one that I want to get up and running as well. Which is what this motor is for. It's a 31. Um, I've already got two of these. Actually one of my other ones isn't working and it's a Triang. Don't worry, I've got all the screws and everything for it. Um, but when I was first looking at this, one of these wires had come off the motor and I was trying to put it back on. But in doing so, one of the, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's like little tabs either side on these motors that hold the brushes and then these spring against it. Well, this side broke on me and I can actually see that someone's glued the tab back on. Um, and this one, I think this one, this one's an airfix, so this one would actually run on here fine, which is why I want to get that one up and running. So I have ordered another one of these, and uh, 
looking at the photo and reading the description that's got all the wires and everything on all I would actually have to do is fit the motor in there and then join the two wires to these two and that's it so I'm just waiting for that to arrive in the mail I think that's it for the um, broken stuff at the minute and I suppose if I really really wanted to I could find spares and rebuild these 040s but I want to weather them up and just use them as um, scenery movable scenery if you like um, I might even put some overgrown grass on one of these sidings Anyway, we've already looked at that one, haven't we? I'll bring you back this away. There we go. So, apart from these two, which are probably just going to be spares locos, all of these, actually not that one, all of these are actually working. That one obviously was a bit of a cheat because I swapped the body, so... <laughs> yeah, I do quite like it in this li um, library that I want. This is what I hated about these lemurs. They always did it. The um, ground connection always comes off of that. And they all do it. Or at least it does it on this one. I think the uh, metal clip that goes on it is a bit worn out, to be honest. I don't know if there's another way I could solve that. Um, but here's the 258s. These are actually my uh, favourites now, I think. I love these. These two rail freights. Uh, what else we've got? What, this little juif. It does work, it's just a bit temperamental. I think it's because all of this is all. I have to say, for a juif, it's. The quality doesn't seem that good, to be honest. Or it could just be that someone has just done. Well, I was going to say a bad paint job, but to be honest, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's just a bit battered. It's got some bits missing on the shell. But yeah, it does run. I'm just... I'm not really sure what I want to do with that, really. Um, then we've got a Class 90 here in a city. I've actually got two because... Over here... I bought about a week ago from a chap around the corner, I bought this one. But this one's a bit different. Well, it's pretty much identical, apart from the top here is that black colour, where it's white on this one, so I don't know. I'm presuming. Oh, I've also realised it's got dark grey along the bottom there, and this one's white, so they are slightly different. Is one a, I'm presuming one is a later version than the other. A later livery than the other. Actually, yeah, because it's got the swallow on the side of it as well, I've just realised. And, I didn't know this until my stepdad actually told me, because I said, I asked, you know, what the little switch is for on the top here. That, so you can use a pentagraph. In that position, it'll pick up using the wheels. So I can run it on this track. But if I had an overhead cable and the pantograph on the top of this, flick that switch, that would run from the pantograph. Which I thought was uh, quite clever, actually. So I've got two. They're slightly different. I've actually noticed this one's got the bits missing from the top there as well. This one's uh, still got it intact. So yeah, these both right. This one, all I had to do is clean the wheels up, and they weren't even that dirty. And that runs um, like a dream. Um, so that one, that one. The 45, that was a pain in the ass. I had to fit a new motor to it. Which is this one. Um, it was knackered. It, it did run for a little while. Um, it's got a ring-filled motor in it. I replaced one of the springs because of that for the brushes because that disappeared. Because one of the contacts is a bit loose because the um, screw thread had been wrecked. 
and I think the brush just got jammed in the motor so I actually coincidentally had a spare one of these that I got from a stepdad when he got rid of all this stuff so stuck that in there soldered the wires to it it should have directional lights but I haven't bothered wiring them up in fact for some reason one of them on one end was working in the opposite direction so say I set it so the train went that way the light wouldn't go on and if I set it so the train went this way the light on this end would come on so I just couldn't be bothered with the lights I'm not that bothered with it I can I can play around with that another day but uh, yeah that is now a running one but I do find that with all these wheels especially with these center bits here that move it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get it on the track but I am happy I've got to put the glass back in there it fell out I must remember to do that I am happy that I've got a big old 45 there that does run. And my third, 47, um, 37, not 47, um, I think this is the one. Yep. Now this didn't really need a lot. I don't know, I might be able to just wiggle this out of here to show you. There's my bodged fix. A fish plate and the motor. Um... There should be a little plastic clip in here for this metal contact to sit under forcing it to connect with a little connector underneath that goes through to these wheels and because I'd broken it wasn't connecting so I've literally just wedged the first thing I could find which was a fish plate and in fact my one of my other um, 37s has got the same problem um, which is actually in the box at the minute the only disappointing thing is, all three of my uh, 37s are all BR Blue. <laughs> I did look on eBay to see if I could find anyone selling, you know, a different body and a different livery. I know you can get ones in the inner city colours and all sorts of other colours, but I couldn't find them. Not just the bodies, I could find the whole loco. But I don't really want the whole loco. Um, in fact... Got another body here for one. They are Hornby. I think no, one of mine is not a Hornby, Hornby, but two of them are. That one is. I think the one I've got over here is. I think that one's a Hornby as well. Yeah. I don't think the one I've got in the box is a Hornby. I think this one's a Lima. No, that one might very well be a Hornby as well. It is a Hornby. Okay, so I stand correct all three of my Hornbys. And uh, on the spare Hornby shell there. In fact, I've got a few of these um, bodies. But I've seen these on eBay and uh, I don't think they're worth a lot. There seems to be quite a common colour for the 37. That's the one we were talking about, isn't it? I've lost track for a moment. And I've got this big boy. Which I think it's a 55. I've got 55 on the side anyway. I'm still learning. I'm getting there, but I am learning. I can identify most of these. <clears throat> um, I've got an 08 shell there, which my stepdad thinks is a Backman. It's got a screw in the front there. If it is, then it's not going to go on any of my um, other 08s. I've got four already. <clears throat> My favourite one is over in the siding over there. I got a job lot on eBay. It's got all the painted con rods and the painted ends and ladders and everything. <clears throat> and I've got these older ones. Like that hit, yeah. Yeah, these three I've got over here are actually different bodied. It doesn't actually say who the manufacturer is on this body. But it is a nice one. I could probably uh, eBay that because I doubt I'll ever get a chassis for that. So. And then we've got this nice little body here as well for an 060. Uh, 
before I clear all this away then to move on to the next stage got this in the city 125 from eBay that arrived today does run but there's some loose gears on the um, Ringfield motor more so one down in here so this wheel isn't always driving and it's actually causing a lot of slippage so it's not running quite right but other than that it is running <clears throat> and then it came with two coaches I'm presuming or I'm, I'm, I'm presuming I English can <laughs> anyway I'm presuming this would have come with the original set but there was this um, restaurant car thrown in as well which I actually didn't have looking at my pile of inner seat coaches on the floor yeah I'm pretty certain I did not have the restaurant car so yeah that was a separate purchase this one was a separate purchase at the car boot as well it's a rather um, beaten up 040 Smoky Joe <laughs> I don't even know if it actually works just that curiosity no that won't work but it actually looks like this has been stored somewhere a bit damp and yeah, so it was only two pounds. Right, I'm going to pause the camera so I can shift all this perhaps up the other end of this table or something. Um, oh, did I ever show you this that I bought during the week? I can't remember. Not this big old bad boy as well last week. Which uh, was a little bit of a pig to get running because the motor had stuck. But um, with a little bit of persuasion and then a run around the track, the motor did uh, free itself off. In fact, I had the same issue with one of these 58s. It worked, but it was very sort of jerky on the track. But I'd given the wheels a good clean and I'd just let it go around the track for a little while. And... Uh, after about 10 minutes of that it just started to run normally so I presume again just a sticky motor from lack of use maybe <clears throat> anywho let me pause let me clear this lot away just a box of spare bits there wheels and some sort of no idea what that's for couldn't find a body for it Anyway, yeah, let me just pause and sort this lot out and uh, I'll get the next lot of stuff uh, arranged on here somehow. Alrighty then, I think this bit's going to be rather quick because it is just some basic rolling stock. Got a whole bunch of trucks at the front here. Got to... Uh, Three nice green ones there. I've got a Lima one on the end here. Um, I've got some older stuff as well. I've got Triang here. Big Triang tank. And there's some stuff here. A couple is broken on that so it falls through. That's another Triang. Two different SO tankers. That one's in red, that one's in blue. Uh, what's this one? Juf. I believe I've got one more Juf somewhere. I think I may have missed a few bits in the lounge. Never mind. Yeah, there's one Juf. I'm sure there's another one somewhere. This one needs a coupler on it. And it's a lemur. I just need to push a coupler on it. It's one of these sort of clip on ones. I've got another bit of rolling stock that need that changed. Here it is. Yeah, see, it's not the same. I have actually got some couplers that I can put on those. One's got that style on, which is the same style of cutler as my um, Fleischmann Loco. Exactly the same style. 
another truck on another one of these. Just got that style of coupler on it as well. And again, excluding the two coaches, I'm sure there was a third coach in this, and I can't remember what it was. But uh, anyway, this was in there, one of the bogies was missing, which I fixed, and this was in there as well. Seems to have had lighting fitted, but I can't get it to work, so I don't know if a bulb blown or if those are very dodgy looking pickups under there aren't working, but yeah, I cannot remember. I'm sure there was a third coach. Anyway, it's just as well, it was actually a bag full of various bogies that came in another box, so I managed to fix that one, and I also managed, because of that same bag, to fix my Virgin coach, which I dropped and broke one of the bogies on. Actually, um, snapped off because these just clip in. Because I dropped it, it snapped the clip. But uh, I've now got a usable Virgin coach. Free wheels quite nicely. <laughs> so uh, I'm really glad I actually picked that box of bits and bobs up to be honest still looking on the floor and all I can see are the um, inner city blue coaches and a couple of others no I, I can't remember what the other coach was oh well and uh, yeah some more rolling stock to the collection anyway. Oh, these ones, I think these are German. Ma Marklin? Yeah, Marklin, Germany. I haven't got nothing that will run these types of clips though. I think clips, couplers. But there's one, two. It's a shame because these are quite nice looking. Um, Stop. Oh. I have to change or add a pair of wheels so they've fallen off at some point. I'm sure I started life with them when I first bought them home. I've got that as well. I quite like these design of um, wagons. I like the little ladders on the end. Yeah, there's those and then there's this little um, flat truck. There's a spare top there as well. I have got another one of these, that's in the box through there. I may even find the um, base for this somewhere. It's my second one of those I've got as well, so I'm quite happy with that. I've got a couple of them. What is that? Stumptrum Horn Medenblick. That is probably German or Dutch or something. I've completely butchered it either way. <laughs> uh, what's this? Oh, Heinz. Oh, yeah, that's a Lima one I've got to find another coupler for. I think this is probably the oldest piece of rolling stock here, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to hoik most of this into my box of rolling stock which is under the layout at the minute. Apart from those that I need to uh, work on, like that one. Uh, change the couplers on this as well if I need to, but it should work with what I've got. I have had to work with that type of coupler, so. Either way, it gives my Fleischmann something to tow around quite comfortably. <laughs> That's actually quite a good interlocking um, couple of that one, I quite like it. And there's this weird thing as well, it's got like a metal body on the inside. It's all cardboard on the outside. Cliff Hill Stone Pavement. Pico. Oh, the weight is Pico at least. Is that weight or is that part of the body? 
but I just think it's weird that it's got this cardboard. I don't think I'll actually use it. Well, I can't use it because I can't use those couplers. I don't know if it'd be worth eBaying in that condition. It's rather beat up and shit, to put it bluntly. <laughs> oh, oh, I need to sort the couplers on that one as well. Why is my Heinz wagon sitting on the piss? Because that wheel has dropped through. There we go, dropped out of its bearing. That's better. Right. Still more to look at. So I'll pause, I'll clear this stock off of here and I'll go and get some more stuff to look at. Okay. So, uh, right, I'm back. It's actually been about an hour for me and only a couple of seconds for you. I had to sort of go and get some dinner as well before I continued. Anyway, this is the last of it. Actually, I've got a few things behind me here. But we'll start with this first. Oh, and I found the other coach as well. It's a double O coach with a couple of uh, double O point switches which uh, I'm going to send those to someone because I haven't got anything um, double O actually I think this double O coach might run on this track I'm not sure anywho what I've got on here is a mix of stuff there's some scenery items such as a whole bunch of these uh, retro Hornby signals various colours and types and I have no idea what any of them mean so I'm going to have to research that. Um, I've even got an electric one here, look at this, that is an old electric one. And uh, just a couple of little red and green LEDs in there and you... I'm presuming... Oh they're spring... I'm presuming we put the wires in there somehow. Is this actually a Hornby one? Hold on, it's got something written on it. Yeah, it is Hornby double O one. I'm sure I could uh, put that somewhere on here. Because I like my vintage stuff. I've got vintage points as well from Triang. Or vintage point motors, I should say. There's four loose like this. Actually, there's five because I've got one in a bundle of wire here. Yes, believe it or not, in that little bundle right there is a point mower. Um, and there's four boxed right over here. These ones are... They've actually all got points in, uh, point motors in. I need to call them points again. Um, there's also two point switches in boxes. And this one right here is an old power um, controller. I don't have an old Triang power supply though. I've got a couple of the controllers, but no power supply. I've also got some of these. One, two, three, four, five. How many points have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I might just actually have enough for the fun of it to use these. Um, I would need an extra bit of wood on the edge here though for that. I don't know. Oh that one's actually been um, in use at some point. It's got bay written on it. So I've got those that I would like to use. I could probably uh, pair them up with these actually. I know these ones are in black but should we look the wiring for it here? We should. Yeah, they will work. I'll put these back in here for safekeeping then. Right, what else have we got? We've got a couple of brand new point motors. Hornby ones. This one's actually... Oh, they have. They've both got the original price on. 
four pounds East Kent models Whitstable this might have been some time ago I'm not sure if that's the phone number on it 77077 or if that's a a different code there's two of those and then there's this um, three-way switch or multi-purpose switch electrical lever switch um, switches available EE1 on off EE2 which is two-way with center off or EE3 which is three-way don't know if I'll have a use for that but it's an interesting little thing um, big tin of various weights there's lead weights there's some of these uh, just metal plates there's some actual loco weights in here as well as all sorts um, you could say that's a heavy tin <laughs> um, in here I've just got some height gauges including an old metal one which is a double O one I think that's what a lot of those signals are they're probably double O as well and there's some um, of these style street lights in fact I'll just said these are probably yard lights and there's about half a dozen of these little lanterns in here as well that I may stick on the model it's a shame that one's not an electric one that would have looked nice yeah just a few little bits like that in there we've got another one I forgot to put with the uh, point switch what else we've got a big pot full of various buffers I am actually planning to put a few of these on there somehow how would they oh I see they just sit on top just because I like the red and white bit on them that's why I want to use these there's several of them there's even some of these dinky little uh, wood effect ones and just some of your usual Hornby ones Oh, this one hasn't had the red stripe painted in the middle. So that's what's in that, uh, that tub. This one, that's not meant to be in there, is literally full of utility poles and telegraph poles and whatnot. And some of them have actually had the tops painted, the ceramic um, insulators painted. So I will probably use these. <laughs> What I think I will do snip these bases off because you know they're only meant to stand like that. But if I snip the bases off, then I'll be able to glue them around the edge like that or along the roadways wherever I decide to put them. So, quite a lot, and that's not counting what I've already got in a pot somewhere. Um, we've got to my stepdad an electric track cleaner I have no idea how this thing actually cleans your track but apparently it's what it is is it a Relco Watford England pack pending so that's out and that is in 16 volt in yeah to track so that goes out to your track I have seen these actually sell for um, a fair bit of money on eBay um, this pot is literally just vintage scenery items really, like well, coal bunker. I suppose I could go and glue in my yard somewhere. And it'll die cast fuel pumps. Some different, um, I don't even know what these are called. <laughs> They're the filling things for the steam engines. We've got one of these with the little red tube on. There's a few different versions of them in here. We've got a grey one. 
I think it is just, I think these two are actually the same. This one's been used on a layout, though I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of stuff stuck around the bottom. So, yeah, I'm pretty certain this top bit, oh, that swivels as well. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that top bit's been painted white. That one's unpainted. There's a few of those. No idea. <laughs> um, some of these footings for the old signals and things. There's one that you can clip on at the track. There's various little signs. You know, it's got a whistle sign. Uh, there is a load of these. And I'm not sure. Is there meant to be like a sign in that circle? I presume a sticker or something would have gone in there. But there is loads of them. Does that track not have the gap? No, that track does not, actually. That one does. Oh. Might need to put another track pin in there. Yeah. I presume that's how they go. Um, looks like we've got a bit of... crap. It's not even anything to do with it. Not a lot of your typical Hornby stuff that you'd get with your train sets. There is all sorts in here. Um, station scale, um, dinky little barricade. I'm not even sure if that's Hornby or anything. It doesn't look like it, to be honest. The latest is just misc bits of furniture, furniture and things. Street furniture, I should say. I've got a yellow one. Yellow one, white one. Yellow one, white one. Yeah, that's pretty much. Oh, some weights have got stuck in here as well. It shouldn't be in there. Uh, well, there's another one of those metal ones. The base for one of those, I believe, is in there as well. And I've got others, so... Uh, there's a big tub of stuff there. But here I've got a couple of... Um, well, I presume that's a chassis kit as well, because it looks just like... Um, what's, actually, no, it doesn't. I'm not actually sure what is in that bag. There's little bits for something. Ah, that could be a detailing pack from the looks of that. I think I can see some vacuum hoses in there. So that could be a detailing bag. I'll have to open it up to have a look properly. And that is a chassis kit. So I have no idea what you do with this. I have no idea what's in it. I'm guessing it's parts to detail a chassis. I do know my screen looks so dark, but it's just the angle I'm looking at it. Uh, uh, some nickel silver rail joiners, which is exactly how I fixed one of my class 47s. <laughs> just jammed one of those in there to make connection. Loads of track connectors of all sorts of different designs. There's this. Now, as I'm unfamiliar with a lot of this, I'm presuming as these connectors would only connect one side of the rail, that it would be for if there's a gap, like here, so you could very easily like jump it across by pushing that in with your little wire. I presume that's what that's for. Um, to me, that would make logical fence, but logical sense, not fence. I don't know where that came from. Um, if anyone else knows, if there's another use for that, feel free to let me know in the comments. There's a few of those. There's some of these as well. Just various um, different track things, the usual Hornby ones here. Which I have actually made use of at least one of these. And then there's these funny little ones. There's these ones with like little screw holes in them. These are Pico, and then there's the same, but a lot shorter. You know, the little metal bit there is a lot shorter, and I bet that's Pico as well. Yeah, they're Pico. And again, this one must have been on a layout because it's got a little bit of scenery stuck to it. Um, that is it. Well, I was going to say that is it for connectors. It's not, because I've got that lot. <laughs> that is all Hornby track connectors. I don't think. It's all the later ones. Let's 
excuse me. Um, I'll just see if there's any triangle ones that I could use in my Super 4 track. But it doesn't look like it. I've only got the one. So, big bag of those. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all of those. I don't know if they're worth putting on eBay or what. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could cheat and use or get power for the points using these, but I just feel that's going to put too much drain on the actual track itself and might just slow down the locomotive, so I'll probably run, a, actually I will run separate power to them. Just, that's my belt clipping on this switches here, on the point switches. Right. Uh, oh, just this. I think that is actually, well, actually, apart from those items behind me, this is it. This is literally just a box full of electrical bits and bobs. Actually, another um, brand new point motor in a bag. Second hand one. And that cost him three quid. <laughs> it's a Pico, this one. Um, there is some more in here, I'm guessing they're going to be... They could be Pico as well. I've nearly got wires sold to them, so... I'm going to go out on a limb and actually guess. Let these come off at the layout and that wires just fell off. I think there's three of these. One... Two... I tipped a bag of them in here and I'm pretty certain there was at least three of them in there. There's four. There's another one. Well, these are, yeah, these have got wires soldered to them, so I presume these were taken off a layout. Not actually sure I've got a use for these ones, so I'll probably chuck these ones on eBay. <clears throat> I'm surprised this chap didn't do that, because he could have made a heck of a lot more money if he did. But his words were to me, he just wanted to get rid of it all. You know, he just wanted it gone, so... Um, there's a few of these lovely little toggle switches in here. I love those. There's three of them. I've got two here and one's um, on my computer desk. There's another point motor, so there must have been five then. There's another one. A bit dusty. Whoops. And then pretty much... We've got some spade connectors there. We've got this little sort of flat slide switch here with a couple of mounting screws and it's just... That's literally all it does. Some of these old school wires with the uh, push connectors on. Quite a few different toggle switches in here. We've got this one which is red, but they are literally just on off. I think this one could be three um two-way because it's got three terminals is it two-way nope it is only on off but actually I suppose you could like switch between you know signal colors couldn't you uh, I think there's some momentary switches here yeah they're wired up these look fairly new actually. Well, at least you can still buy these anyway. Uh, a bunch of them. There's a large toggle switch here. A large rocker switch. Big old connector block. And this to operate points with, which actually feels pretty cheap to be honest. What's it got written on it? Oh, it's Juve. That might be why it feels so cheap then. That might be why that one has actually broken, has actually stuck down. But that's just like literally just momentary switches. So you can like energize your point motor up like that, and as soon as you let go, that would return. But yeah, that feels pretty uh, cheap. It's got the pin there, so you can actually interconnect them. I mean, it probably does the job. Not if I throw it on the floor like that at one. Okay. <laughs> it's 
stay down now for the time being now. What I want to do is actually put these into use along with, if I can find them, because I got these in a job lot on eBay when I bought some and when I was looking for track for my old trying stuff. There's a job lot that came with um, about four or five of these old MES ramp holders. I've got a bag full of these in white, but they're new. Brand spanking new, which I think they should be over here as well, actually. Unless I've moved them, which it looks like I have. No. So you can still buy them today. These are the new ones. If you actually look, if I compare it to the one up the top there, these have got a thinner base. And I remember these on um, in science class. Always used stuff like this. I can't remember if I've actually shown this box of stuff either, so I'll bring that out as well in a minute. So yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. <laughs> it? Oh no, it isn't. I forgot this, didn't I? This is literally just a tin full of like scenery items. There's some water trans water slide transfers there. There's what looks like another chassis kit. Um, some tools on this. Yeah, and in the bottom here there is. I haven't had a look properly, but there's some cable reels for something. Perhaps they went on like a flat wagon. In fact, I've got some flat wagons. I could glue these on there, actually. I've got this as well. I could glue that in a yard, maybe. We have got a driver and fireman. So if I want to stick a driver and fireman on one of my locos, I can. I've got enough steam locos, and I know very few of them have actually got the drivers fit. And then there's literally just a, all sorts of other just random plastic bits and pieces. I have no idea what's actually in here. Oh, I can see a buffer. I've actually got a tin full of random little plastic bits and bobs like this as well, so I may actually empty this out into that instead of having... Thank you for that. I'll, I'll never actually understand why, you know, drivers like to do that. I don't know if I've just always been an old fuddy-duddy, but I just don't get the thrill of racing around town at night like a lunatic. Some might say, you know, it's dangerous, I shouldn't do that. Well, I suppose in theory it is, but to be honest, I have known very few accidents to happen because of that. At least in the uh, 12 years I've lived here, but I digress. I digress. Forgot this thing as well. That's just got some reed switches in it, actually, and resistors. Brand new ones. There's the, uh, are they resistors? I don't think they are resistors, actually. No! The sub-miniature axial fuses. I thought they were resistors when I looked at them the other day, but it was only a quick glance. Literally a quick glance. And in there we have got three reed switches. Which are very handy if you want to automate your layout because you can put a magnet underneath your locomotive so as soon as it passes over this it'll close it. So you can use your locomotive to activate certain things like signals for example. Signals and points I suppose if you wished. But yeah that is pretty much my haul for I think that's what was that about 40 quid I think think give or take a couple of pounds which I didn't think was a bad deal there's a few more bits there that I actually wish I did get now like a load of um, 
garden fencing and stuff like that that I could have used on here. I've actually got some, but now that I think about it, you know, perhaps I should have got that as well. But never mind. Oh yeah, I actually forgot. That isn't everything that I've got from the car. <laughs> I've got three of these um, cases of assorted bits and bobs. Literally just loads of little spares. There's wheels, nuts, bolts. I can see some grey vacuum hoses in there. Bag of brass washers. There's even the uh, box doors there for some steam locos. There's a load of bits of conrod in here. Um, these look like brass rivets for something or other. That's what's in that one. There's three of these and he let me have all three for eight quid. For the three, not each, for the three. This one, again, has got some spare steam loco parts in this one. I'm not sure what they are. It's all sorts of bits, but there is a few of these. What I call the bell. I can't remember what they're called, but I'm calling them a bell. There's also traction tires. There's actually a brand new pair of um, X04 and X03 motor brushes right there. Brand new. Um, there's even some um, Ringfield motor brushes and springs in here. There's some more little brass rivets, I th think. No, nope, these are whistles. Look at that, separately fitted whistles to go on a steam logo. There's all sorts in here. I have no idea what these are. If someone knows, please uh, let me know in the comments. But there is a number of these things in there. That's actually one that's, I'm not sure if it is meant to be black or been painted black, but the rest are a light grey colour. More screws. There is a load of traction tyres here. This is just one pack in here. Got some, um, I think they're buffers, it looks like that. There's literally just all sorts. There's actually some brass buffers in here as well. I don't know if you can see them. And this one here. Oh, my traction tyres are just fell out. That's not a bad thing actually because I can put them in the third tub. Put them in this one. Which is more or less wheels, traction tyres and couplers. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, in fact, I've got the wheels for the bogies for my um, Virgin coach from this one as well. I've already got a bunch of these wheels as well. Um, in a tub which is actually behind me. This is what I got from my stepdad when he was clearing out his stuff to go to uh, O-Gage. I ain't going to get all of them in there though. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely not short of wheels. There's some stuff in there that I actually don't know why I keep because it's knackered. Um, I've got the main drive gears for a Ringfield motor. I've got the little brass one. Plus the two main large gears, which actually I may need for that um, inner seat I showed you earlier. Then again, there's also some um, tiny little screws like that one. Traction tyres, traction tyres, bucket load of traction tyres loose in that one. Traction tyres, traction tyres. Buffers. <laughs> Just loads. He has a load of buffers in the bottom of that one. There's a few um, coupling hooks in there. A lot of uh, these are the interchangeable, the swappable Hornby couplers. See that? Just allows you to swap them. Uh, uh, they're not the ones I want. I did want some for a couple of wagons. I've got this more interchangeable ones. I'm hoping I've actually got the ones I need. No. Nope. Because I've got them two wagons over there. That I... 
I'm hoping I had some different clip on ones for. Oh, I thought I found one then, but. No, oh, I have actually found one. I have found one. It's got no hook on it. But it should, if I'm right, should just pop on like that. It's a bit stiff though. No, nope, it just popped straight off. Maybe that's not the one. No, that's not the one. Oh. Well, that's a bit of a bummer because they've both got one missing and I can't use them with one unless I stuck them on the end of a, a train. <laughs> Get away with it that way. Um, right. Yeah, I've got a box here that I got from a chat on Facebook, actually. But I can't remember if I've actually shown you this or not. But again, it's some miscellaneous scenery items. I've got some more signals. Um, that's a crescent made in England. Big old, I love these levers. Look at this. Realistic looking levers like you'd get in a signal box. Look at that. That's brilliant. I love it. I just want to learn what the signals actually mean. I'm learning what locos are. Actually, I've done better at learning what diesel locos are than I have the steam. Which is a bit weird, because I do like steam just as much. Um, oh, joy, that one's fell off again. This one's got a habit of uh, falling off its hinge. I'll have to f sort that one out later. What's this one? Hornby! That one looks like that was under the layout at one point as well. That got the grass around the bottom. That's what I want to get done on here. Um, some more of those street lights and telegraph poles. <laughs> Bits and pieces, scenery items, some more scenery items. So you've got the platform wagons there, whatever they're called, telephone box. A couple of the Hornby sheds painted up there. I could put some scenery on, I could glue stuff on like that. I do apologise if I have already shown you all of this, I just, I can't remember. I honestly cannot remember. Got some old trying bodies here, I could put in a field somewhere as abandoned wagons. That one's all been vandalised, all the bars have been broken out of the windows. Uh, a couple of old trying wagons here. Good ones. That's a good version of this. See? I've actually got another one of these in my rolling stock box. There we go. I've not got a tunnel so that can go on eBay. Um, another double O coach there. Restaurant car. Might put that with the other double O stuff because, like I said, I know someone that's got a bunch of that and he can make better use of it than I could. There's a Hornby crossover track. No, it's a Lima. Big lemur crossover track there. We have got, I don't know, <laughs> it's old, it's dirty, but it's got the Hornby style couplers on. But it doesn't say what it is under there. I don't even know what it is. It looks like it fires. But yeah, it does fire because it's got a little trigger under here. If I pull that all the way back on the spring, let me pull a little trigger. Boing. So it fired something at some point. Then we've got another water tower to fill up your steamers with. A couple of um, generic plastic trucks here. Oh, this one's fallen a bit. <laughs> Even the body's fallen off of that. Well, there's nothing a bit of glue won't fix though. These long bits are. Is that meant to go that way up or the other way? I don't know. I'll figure that out later. That was to get. I've got a spare body for that as well. See? <laughs> it's 
spare body. Um, I've actually got this one in box as well, a little corgi one. Scale 176, trackside models that can go in my not least. Whatever the heck this was, it's obviously missing a big chunk of it, but that seems to go like that and then get triggered when you hit when this gets locked under here. So that locks it all like that. Oh, I've done that wrong. So we do that like that. We lock this little bit here. And that little tab that sticks out. So I presume that hits something trackside. It's supposed to release that, then it's supposed to go click. So I don't know, is there meant to be something in here? Is it meant to go bang or something? Meant to open something? I have no idea. But it is made by Triang from the looks of it. Yep. R249 made in England. So another old Triang. Yeah, that was uh, that's it for that box. So now that is everything. I probably paid more for this box of stuff. Actually, I did pay more for this box of stuff from that chap on Facebook than I did for all of this. But there was a few other bits and bobs in here that I don't think is in here now. I'm sure I've got a few other bits and pieces with it. Anyway, I'm going to shut the video down here. So, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this one interesting. It's probably the biggest biggest used haul that I've actually bought locally. I was, yeah, I'm pretty certain of that. Um, that signal's completely fell apart now. But <laughs> as I said before, there's the actuation wire thing and then there's the doohickey. Right. Alright then. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.